What's up, everybody? I'm Andrew Clyden. Welcome to the Door County Pulse, your weekly roundup of the good news and views in Door County. This week on the Door County Pulse, Door County businesses are getting creative this season. Peninsula players share some of their pastimes. We ask if they're blooming yet. And these two kids spent their quarantine making a movie. All that and more on this week's Door County Pulse. Let's see what's new this week. Over the weekend, there was a condo fire up in Sister Bay, and the Sister Bay Liberty Grove Fire Department shared this video from inside the condo showing why it's so important to make sure you close your doors when you go to sleep. So the Sister Bay Liberty Grove Fire Department responded last night to a structure fire here in Sister Bay. And the purpose of this video is to just demonstrate the importance of keeping a door closed when you're sleeping in your bedroom. So we're going to just do a quick walkthrough into the kitchen in the uh, dining room, living room area, and you can see that there's, it's a total loss. The roof is burned right off and gone, a lot of heavy and deep charring. As we come down this short hallway, only a couple of feet to a closed bedroom door. So we open the bedroom door, we find virtually no damage. We had to pull some ceilings and some walls to get at some uh, hidden fire and some voids, but you can see the advantage of sleeping with the door closed. Thank you. As many businesses opened up for Memorial Day weekend, we saw a ton of unique and innovative approaches to some of the challenges that we're going to be facing this season. For instance, Wickman House is doing a summer of barbecue, where they've switched up their menu in favor of some awesome takeout barbecue options. Chop has been doing takeout, and over the weekend, they opened their outdoor bar. And Heirloom Cafe and Provisions has been doing curbside pickup, but they've also opened up one of their windows for walk-up dining. And that is just a few of the businesses that are doing new and innovative things this summer, but there are so many more. This week, I sat down with Pulse Foodie Aaliyah Kid to talk about even more businesses that are getting creative with how they're approaching this season. Okay, so we are here with Aaliyah Kid. How's it going, Aaliyah? Going good. What are you noticing right now in terms of businesses getting creative and innovative, trying to deal with the challenges that COVID-19 is bringing this season? Yeah, really since the middle of March, a lot of restaurants and food businesses have had to pivot and get really creative with how they're serving food to people to be safe. I've seen a lot of places launch their online ordering systems, which I think is a great option even when we get to be back in the dining rooms again. A lot of call-in ordering and even contactless ordering. So, and I've seen many businesses are keeping that going too. So that can still be an option if you're immunocompromised or aren't ready to venture out yet. The other option for many places is being able to take customers outside, which really reduces the the spread of any germs. So I think any place that has outdoor area is really going to capitalize on that this year. So any outdoor bars or patio areas and just expanded outdoor seating, I think is going to be even bigger than this year than last year. Right. One thing that you mentioned in your article that you wrote last week for the pulse was some businesses coming up with creative solutions just for having guests walk up and order. I know that heirloom cafe and provisions opened up a window for people to come up to and do their orders from Uh, there are places that are bringing their bars outside side for the first time, doing more art seating. Uh, any particularly creative ventures that you've seen so far? Uh, well, I know, yeah, the heirloom I thought was pretty creative with their, their um, re- regular crank window that they turned into a walk-up window. But, um, you know, there's the food food trucks. So Wally's Weenie Wagon doesn't have to adapt too much, but um, that's really helpful for them. And then just being able to space people out on the lawn. Uh, food uh, Chives Food Truck also, they've been really successful, I think, doing like Friday fish fry. I know they've got great burgers. Um, Door County Creamery just opened and is also doing um, order ahead and go pick up. Pretty contactless there. And then, yeah, the other thing that I've noticed, a lot of places doing like Whistling Swan and Chives and um, Time Catering doing larger format food orders. So so you could order an entree for two or you can order kind of a shared meal kit that you can either create at home in your kitchen and share with your family. Um, so those are some things that normally I don't think we would have seen or experienced that are now available to us. Great. Well, Leah, thank you so much for coming on the show today and I look forward to hearing more from you soon. Yeah, thank you.
Last week on the Door County Pulse podcast, we had Dan Egan, author of Death and Life of the Great Lakes, on to talk about the high water levels in Lake Michigan this year. It was a really great episode with lots of fascinating information. So if you haven't checked out the Door County Pulse podcast yet, you can find it wherever you get your podcasts. It's on Spotify, or you can check out the archives over on doorcountypulse.com slash podcasts. Next, let's send things over to your friend and mine, Katie Roth, who's got the scoop on another cool way that Door County Villages are honoring graduating seniors this year. Thanks, Andrew. Um, today I have with me, I have um, Bryn Swanson from the Bailey's Harbor Community Association, and I also have um, Lauren Bremer from the Gibraltar School Board. And uh, today we're talking about um, something I saw on social media, some banners going up in Bailey's Harbor. So Lauren, could you tell us a little bit about um, how this project started for the graduating class of 2020 at Gibraltar? Yeah, for sure. So a few weeks ago, I got a text from my friend Miles Danhausen, who had seen something similar in different communities as a way to celebrate their graduating classes, was having each of their towns put up banners on light posts congratulating them. And that was enough of a nudge for me to go to the rest of the school board and the administration and say, hey, this is an awesome idea. Can we, can we chase it? Can we go for it? Bailey's Harbor could say yes, and Ephraim said yes. So we've got two of those uh, villages and towns with their banners up. Nice. That's awesome. And so, Bryn, you were kind of a liaison between um, Lauren and the town, and you are also a Gibraltar alum. So did you feel particularly um, like a soft spot in your heart for these graduating students? Even though this is happening everywhere, it's kind of special. I did. I did. It was heartbreaking to kind of watch everything unfold. And when um, our town chair, Doug, sent over Lauren's email, I really, he's like, what do you think? And we were in the process of picking out what we were going to do for this year's banners. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So it worked out really well. And it's, it's just a really great thing. We're really happy to do it. Do you think that this will give tourists a different perspective of, uh, of their chosen destination? Absolutely. I think it kind of gives a, a real local and personal feel to it. And I think that um, visitors, when they see it, they can kind of relate to it. And everybody kind of see, views Door County as Disneyland. And it's everything is just very for, for your entertainment. But there is actually a really thriving community here that is really something special. And so I think it kind of gives a little bit of a personal touch to it. So yeah, very we're, hopeful, we're hopeful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, this has been a pleasure. Thank you so much, ladies, and congratulations to the class of 2020. And back to you, Andrew. Thanks, Katie. Let's see what else Door County has been up to this week. Over the weekend, I set out to answer the question that has been on everybody's mind this time of year. Are the cherry trees blossoming yet? Check it out. Andrew, are you okay? Huh? Oh, yeah, I'm okay. What's going on? There's something I have to know. Are they blooming yet? Nope. You can watch the entire series over on our Facebook page at Peninsula Pulse. Next up, the Peninsula players have been sharing some of their favorite stories behind their cast and crew pastimes, including this song, Three Squares a Day, by Matt Holzfeind. Hey everyone, uh, this is three squares a day. When I was a youngster, my mother sang this song. You must eat three square meals a day to grow up big and strong. And from that day I've labored to follow her advice I try to eat a proper meal not once, not twice but thrice but living as an artist is harder than it seems it's difficult to feed oneself in this economy sometimes it's hard to find the time to eat three meals a day a 
donut, a granola bar, and perhaps Chipotle. But then I took my journey to a garden to escape my current gastronomic hell. A place where fine art blossoms in a theater by the bay, and where you can get fed after a bell. Now I get three squares a day. You can listen to the rest of the song as well as check out the rest of the Pastime series over on the Peninsula Players Facebook page or their YouTube channel. Finally, 11-year-old Penny and 8-year-old Lucy have spent their time over the last couple of weeks making their very own short film. Check it out. The time machine we built is ready. The calculations are correct. Let's think about this. I know where we should go in the time machine. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I think so. Dinosaurs! Dinosaurs. Mom, Dad, we're going to go and use our time machine. Great. That sounds good. I hope killing that thing won't change the future. Mom, Dad, we're back. What's wrong? Huh? Oh my god, we changed the future. Ah! Oh my god. You can watch the entire movie over on their YouTube channel. And that is just some of the cool stuff Door County has been up to this week. If you've got something cool that you want to share with us, send it over to our Facebook page, at Peninsula Pulse. We can't wait to see what you and your neighbors have been up to. Thank you for watching the Door County Pulse. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. If you're watching over on Facebook, share the video with somebody who you think might enjoy it. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week. Thank you for watching the Door County Pulse. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will be notified as soon as there is new Door County content for you. You can check us out online at doorcountypulse.com where you can see Door County news and the Door County Pulse podcast. Check out another video while you're here, maybe watch a playlist, and uh, we'll see you next time.